So, so these are the, 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 the most current uh, updates on the, the right side. And uh, we're, we're looking at the right ventricle now. So it has a unique crescent shape, which adds to the complexity to the quantification of its size and function. So we said the, the, the right is it's a little bit different from left ventricle in, in, in this respect. Uh, this chamber plays an important role in the morbidity and mortality of patients. Um, uh, sent in, we're, we're, we're presenting with signs and symptoms of uh, cardiopulmonary disease. As mentioned before, we usually neglect the right side of the heart. Right side of the heart is extremely important, however, so you, you try and know everything about it. Until recently, little uniformity in echocardiographic imaging of the right heart existed because of a lack of familiarity with the various techniques and the enormous attention directed towards left heart quantification. Again, we used to spend all of our time looking at the left side of the heart, neglecting the right side of the heart, not appreciating how important it is because without the, the right side of the heart, there's no left side. The ASC has recent, recently published a guidelines document endorsed by the European and the Canadian um, uh, bodies, standardizing the approach for the evaluation of right heart dimensions and function during echo assessment of right heart. Compared with that document, this section provides updated reference values for RV dimensions and most parameters of systolic and diastolic function, which should replace the previously published guidelines. So these are the updates, really. So the general recommendation for RV quantification, in all clinical studies, a comprehensive examination of the right ventricle should be performed, taking into account the study indication and available clinical information. So all of your studies, incorporate evaluation of a right, right, right ventricle. The operator should examine the right ventricle using multiple acoustic plane or windows. And the report should present an assessment based on qualitative, what you see, and quantitative, what you measure. Uh, the parameters that can be measured include the RV and RA size, a measure of RV systolic function, as assessed by at least one or a combination of the following uh, methods. So you have to use at least one of the recognized uh, assessment of RV systolic function. Again, if the RV systolic function is abnormal, you should use at least two methods. Um, okay, so. So the, 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 the things that are, you're going to use to evaluate RV systolic function, fractional area change, so we went over that. Uh, you can use derived tricuspid with lateral under systolic velocity, the so-called S prime, we went over that. You TAPSI, tricuspid with under plane systolic excursion, RV index of myocardial performance, RIMP, went over that. RV systolic pressure, you know how to do that, typically calculated using tricuspid regurgitation jet and an estimation of the RA pressure based on the inferior vena cava size and collapsibility should be reported when a complete TR Doppler velocity envelope is present. Okay, so those are all the things that you should be doing. When feasible, Additional parameters such as RV volumes and ejection fraction using three-dimensional echo should complement the basic two-dimensional echo measurements as listed above. So if you have the, 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 the three-dimensional echo package, then you can do your volumes and the ejection fraction, okay? The recommended methods, as well as the advantages and limitations of each parameter are summarized in table 
7, and 9. Whereas the new reference values are displayed in tables 8 and 10. These reference values are based on published mean and standard deviation data obtained from normal adult individuals without any histories of heart or pulmonary disease. And then there's a supplemental uh, table 7. This document uses the methodology as in the previous RV guidelines, whereby a meta-analysis was performed for each parameter. So not all of the recommended values are identical to those published in the previous guidelines. On the basis of the inclusion of new data published in recent reports, minor changes were made in the cutoff. Uh, values for RV dimension. Um, S prime, so you know how to do your S prime taps your RIMP. So a new publication since the last guidelines have resulted in changes in the reference values for three-dimensional echo derived RV ejection fraction and volumes. It is important for the reader to recognize that most of the values proposed are not indexed to gender body surface area or height, despite data suggesting the advantages of indexing. Okay? So again, when we talk about indexing, you just divide whatever value with body surface area, because even though we do absolute measurements, a small individual is going to have a different measurement from a, a larger uh, individual. But if you index it, then you know, it take into consideration the size of the, the patient. As a result, it is possible that patients at either extreme of height or body surface area may be misclassified as having values outside the reference range. And it is recommended that the interpreting physician consider these parameters when generating a report. So you should consider the size of the patient. Someone who is 6'9", it's going to have a slightly different set of measurements than someone who is, say, 4 feet 11. So, okay. This pot potential misclassification also applies to other groups, such as patients with congenital heart disease and endurance athletes for whom specific reference values are um, non existent. Um, essential imaging windows when you're doing right heart assessment. Apical four with an RV focus, apical four chamber view. So this is an apical four chamber view, but you modify your view to look more on the right side. So we we'll call it an RV focus view. Okay, just a modified apical four chamber view. And um, so you want to look at the RV structures. All right, so this is. Hello? Oh, not okay. okay. So again, it's an apical four chamber view. And all you do, you, you manipulate or you modify the view to look more on the right side. We know this is the right ventricle because the tricuspid valve is lower in the ventricle than the mitral valve. So it's the right side. So you, you, you just manipulate. Uh, the probe to see more of the right side. So it's the right ventricle, the right atrium. Okay. Um, so basically, that's 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 what it is. All right. So it's just a a, a, a refocusing of the the the, the apical four chamber view. Um, let's just go back a little bit.
chewing. All right, so so these uh, well we're not we're not looking at this we already did that. All right, so so we we you can you can do short axis of the um, right side. You can do your left parasternal RV inflow view. Subcostal view provide also image requirement uh, of a comprehensive assessment of the RV size, function, uh, and pressures. In most cases, in the RV focus view, visualization of the entire RV free wall is better than in a standard four chamber view. So again, it's just a, it's a four chamber view, but you focus more on the right side. Uh, it is therefore recommended that to measure the right ventricle as uh, right ventricle, a dedicated view focus on the RV uh, be used. And we went over the um, the, 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 the figures. Um, again, let's um, let's just so. So again, it's it, it, it's focusing more on the right sides, okay? So this is your septal leaflet, this is your anti, this is tricuspid valve. So this is the right side. So your septal leaflet is on the septum, anterior leaflet is right there. And then you can do a uh, sort of uh, short axis view. Uh, so these are some measurements that you need to, um, okay. So the new values, for TAPSI, so it's abnormal if it if TAPSI is less than 17 millimeters. This is the range, however, but we usually use just one number. So if your TAPSI is less than 17, it suggests that you have RV systolic dysfunction. If your S prime, so you, you need to remember the new values, your S prime, if it's less than 9.5, okay? So previous value for TAPSI was 16, previous value for your S prime was 10. So it's 9.5, so remember the, 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 new, the new values, okay? RV fractional area change, less than 35 is abnormal, okay? Um, if you're gonna do uh, your RV three-dimensional ejection fraction less than 45 percent, so which is completely different from the the, the left side. Okay. Um, okay. So the ejection fraction for the right ventricle, but well, it has to be done using three-dimensional echo. Okay less than 45 percent is abnormal and you can do your uh tissue doppler um uh, of the um the, the the rv as well uh, we don't usually do a lot of your your e your e to a ratio can be done um e prime e prime for the for for for, for the rv less than 7.8 and that's abnormal and your EE prime ratio uh, greater than six. So the, the 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 numbers that you really really need to know is the TAPSI less than seventeen, RV S prime, okay, less than nine point five, and um, you for for probably exam purpose fractional area change less than thirty five percent subnormal, and then probably for exam your 3D ejection fraction less than 45% is abnormal. Okay, so th those are some important numbers that you need to know. All right.
So most of these uh, measurements you, you, you can do, okay? At least you have been doing them, so you're supposed to know very well. All right, so let's, let's um, what about the linear measurements, RV linear measurements? So quantification of RV dimensions is critical and reduces interreader variability compared with visual assessment alone. Measurements of 2D um, echo are challenging uh, because of the complex geometry of the right ventricle and the lack of specific right-sided anatomic landmarks to be used as reference points. The conventional apical four-chamber view focused on the left ventricle results in considerable vari variability in how the right heart is sectioned and consequently RV linear dimensions and areas may be may vary widely in the same patient with relative to minor rotations in the transducer trans position. So what they're saying is that, you know, if you do your, your, your typical apical four chamber view where you concentrate more on the, the left side, you know, if you do measurements based on that, just slightly rotating or moving the probe, you can get huge variation in measurements, which is not good. Be careful, you know, the same patients, you're going to get multiple different values. Some might be in the normal range, some going to be outside the normal range. So RV dimensions are best estimated from a RV focus apical four chamber view obtained with either lateral or medial transducer rotation and uh, figure 70 and, and uh, 7 uh, shows you that. So what you need to do is just go over those and learn how to do the RV focus views. Care should be taken to obtain the image with the LV apex at the center of the scanning sector while displaying the largest basal RV diameter and thus avoiding foreshortening. Of note, the accuracy of RV measurements may be limited when the RV fee wall is not well defined because of the dimensions of the ventricle itself or its position behind the sternum. Recent data have suggested that indexing the RV size to body surface area may be relevant in some circumstances, but the measurements used in those studies lack the reference point of uh, RV focus view and frequently use RV areas rather than linear uh, dimensions. So reference values for RV dimensions are listed. Uh, in general, a diameter greater than 41 millimeter at the base and 35 at the mid level in the RV focus view generally indicate dilatation. So this is what they're saying. So let's... Um, uh, So when you do your measurements, at, at the, we usually use 42, remember? It's now 41. Let me just see if we can get some image. So when you do your RV measurements, base anything greater than 41 millimeter now suggests, so the, the measurement at the RV base, it goes up to 41 at the mid, Level 35. I'm going to show you what they mean by that. Okay, so this is, so if you remember when you do this type of measurement, all right, so this is your RV focus view. So this is the, this is the base. So you, you see you're focusing in the, the RV, you can see uh, the, the RV apex. So you measure the base, and this is at the mid cavity level. So now, if this is greater than 41, it suggests RV uh, dilatation, and it's greater than 35, okay? 
So th that's the measurement that they're talking about. So we it was 40, 42 in the previous document, but um, it has changed to 41. All right, so what about RV systolic function? So you're gonna do your your measurements pretty much the same way. All right, so the RV systolic function has been evaluated using multiple parameters. We can use RIMP, TAPSI, 2D fractional area change, three-dimensional ejection fraction, S prime, and longitudinal strain and strain rate by uh, Doppler tissue imaging and two-dimensional uh, speckle tracking echo. Multiple studies have demonstrated the clinical utility and value of RIMP, TAPSI, 2D fractional area change, and S prime of the track hospital analysis, as well as longitudinal speckle tracking echo uh, uh, strain. RV ejection fraction by three dimensional echo seems to be more reliable and have better reproducibility when properly performed. And a growing body of data are currently available to provide uh, normal reference rates. So, especially when you're doing exams and you talk about volume, once it's a three dimensional echo, three dimensional echo is the most accurate means of assessing volume anywhere in the heart. So that's, a, that's an, an, not a common question that they usually bring. You know, you're gonna do, say, ejection fraction or whatever, three-dimensional echo, give you excellent volume assessment, so you should use it. So RIMP, remember we, we went over how you do RIMP. There are two methods of doing RIMP. You can use your uh, regular uh, Doppler or you can use your tissue Doppler imaging to do RIMP. Uh, RIMP is an index of global RV performance. It's not talking about systolic or diastolic, global RV performance. This isovolumetric contraction time and isovolumetric relaxation time and ejection time intervals should be measured from the same heartbeat using either P doubler, pulse wave Doppler, or Doppler tissue imaging velocity at the lateral track with analysis. Uh, when using PW spectral Doppler to calculate RIMP, it is important to ensure that the non-consecutive beats have similar RR interval. So you wanna use RR interval that are similar, okay? Because remember, when you're doing RIMP, you have to look at, it, uh, again, RIMP is from tricuspid valve closure to tricuspid valve opening, you're gonna subtract from that ejection time and you're gonna divide by ejection time. So what you're left with is your IVCT, isovolumetric contraction, contraction time, plus your IVRT divided by ejection time. But what you're doing, you're sampling tricuspid inflow and you're also sampling um, your RV outflow. So there are two different uh, samples you have to take. Your, your transducer, sorry, your, your cursor is gonna be over the tricuspid valve, okay? And your cursor is gonna be over the pulmonic valve. What they're saying is that you have to make sure that they, they, they are, are interval are similar for those uh, two measurements, okay? All right, so this limitation does not apply. When you're doing uh, a Doppler tissue imaging, you don't have to consider that. That's, you know, that's, just, that's not a problem, okay? So when you're using uh, a tissue imaging, that's not a problem. RIMP can be false and low in conditions associated with elevated RA pressure. So when anything that causes elevated RA pressures can falsely um, reduce your, your RIMP which will shorten the IVRT. So RIMP greater than 
0.43 by pulse wave Doppler and greater than 0.54 by tissue uh, imaging indicate RV dysfunction. So you have to know these values. Okay. RIMP for, for, for pulse wave Doppler, if you're using pulse wave Doppler method, greater than 0.3 is abnormal. And for, for tissue Doppler imaging, greater than 0.54 is abnormal. So let's look at TAPSI now. TAPSI is easily obtainable and represents a measure of RV longitudinal function. So remember, when we do TAPSI, we're looking at how much the RV, the, 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 the tricuspid valve plane moves up and down. Okay? Sorry about that. Okay, so 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 TAPS is a very important measure me, uh, uh, me, measurement. It is measured by M mode echo, with the cursor optimally aligned along the direction of the tricuspid lateral annulus in the apical four uh, chamber view. Okay, although this index pre Dominantly reflects RV longitudinal function. It has also shown good correlation with parameters to estimate RV uh, global systolic function, um, such as radionuclide derived RV ejection fraction, uh, two dimensional echo RV fractional area change, and two dimensional EF. So, what they're saying, even though what we're doing is looking at the longitudinal movement of the uh, RV lateral wall. It has an excellent correlation with global RV function, systolic functions. And when you look at other studies, such as um, radionuclide derived RV ejection fraction, fractional area change, and two dimensional ejection fraction of the RV, it correlates very well. Okay? As a one-dimensional uh, measurement relative to the transducer position, TAPSI may over or underestimate RV function because of cardiac translation. Be careful that you're putting it, you have to put the transducer, the lateral tricuspid on the plane. Uh, a lot of time I see the transducer is in the, the, on the right atrium or it's further up uh, on the, the RV. Be careful where you're putting your, tra your transducer. Um, although there may be minor variations in TAPSI values according to gender and body surface area, general TAPSI less than 17 millimeters is highly suggestive of RV systolic uh, dysfunction. So, yeah, so, so seven, less than 17 is abnormal. What about uh, fractional area change? So, we know how to do that. It, it, you know, you basically get your RV, um, RV focus view, of course. You're going to trace the RV border in diastole, trace it in systole. Fractional area change is your diastolic area minus your systolic area divided by your diastolic area. And anything less than 35% indicates RV systolic dysfunction. Okay. Um, your your S prime, so called S prime. So your Doppler tissue imaging derived tricuspid lateral annular systolic velocity. I think we do this in probably ninety percent of our studies. Um, your DTI derived S prime uh, velocity is easy to measure, reliable and reproducible, and it has been shown to correlate well with other measures of global RV systolic function. Specific age-related cutoff values have been reported in a large uh, sample of ELSA subjects. It is important to keep the basal segment and the lateral, uh, the basal segment and the annulus aligned with the Doppler cursor to avoid velocity underestimation. Similar to TAPSI, S prime is measured relative uh, is a measure relative to the transducer and may be therefore influenced by overall arc motion. 
and S prime velocity less than 9.5 centimeters per second measured on the free wall indicates RV systolic dysfunction. So similar to TAPSI, but instead of pressing the M mode, you press your TDI button and you'll get the velocity. So it's a velocity of the lateral annulus plane. RV strain and strain rate is, is very accurate. Uh, we're not going to delve too much on that, but it's extremely accurate, OK? Um, uh, we will we, we'll spend a little bit of time on speckle tracking echo to, for you guys to fully understand this. Again, RV three-dimensional ejection fraction, extremely accurate. Yeah, but it's a three-dimensional measurement. And as we said before, ejection fraction less than 45% is abnormal for the RV. All right. Um, so those are the updates for the RV. Um, what we can do the next time we can look at the, uh, the, the right atrium. Okay, um, and there's a tendency to index our stuff that we're doing, uh, and that's just because you have different size individuals. And if you take into consideration the body surface area, the size of the patient, then you're, you're, you're you know, you'll get a more accurate assessment. Um, so so let us um so then, then uh, on tuesday we'll we'll just go over some more updates because i think the updates are important you need to know the current recommendations so you know cuz things are changing uh all the time so let's finish up updates on tuesday and then we can move on to something else um, all right, so, all right, uh, all right, that's it, okay, bye-bye.